Um, I will try to do that in 15 minutes, so it's quite short, but we had a lot of presentation showing very interesting data. What is very important in this field of biliary tract cancer is the fact that this is a very heterogeneous disease. We know that for a long period of time because the treatment, the surgical treatment is not the same, but probably the carcinogenesis is not the same. The fact is also that the epidemiology is increasing. We see more and more of these patients, and we know also that the carcinogenesis is very, very complex, as it has been uh, reported in a very recent uh, review in BMC Cancer. This is only for uh, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. And you can see the number of pathways that are involved in the carcinogenesis of this disease. But at the end, we can do some, uh, we can have some progress. Uh, and we will see that in a few minutes. But if we look on the data concerning all commerce uh, evaluations of targeted therapy, this is a complete failure without any um, targeted therapy, MKI, MKI that has shown any activity in these patients, whatever you use, cetuximab or uh, bevacizumab, all failed tarsiva, all failed in this uh, specific disease, and we have no uh, data showing that targeted therapy could be useful. But they were evaluated in all commerce with a lot of different diseases, in trihepatic cholangiocarcinoma, mixing gallbladder carcinoma, and probably this is the, the explanation of this complete failure. After that, there were a lot of evaluation of data, and, and we have seen a new presentation about that concerning the heterogeneity of the disease and the uh, biological abnormalities that we can see in, uh, in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, in extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, and in gallbladder carcinoma. And at the end, you can see on this slide that the frequency of each abnormality is very different from one type of biliary tract cancer to another one. And if we want to summarize a little bit that on, a, on, a, on an anatomical uh, slide, you can see for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, Keras mutations, FGF4 diffusions, IDH1 uh, and 2 uh, mutations, BRAF mutation a little bit, for gallbladder cancer, mainly R2, uh, mutation or amplification, uh, and a, a little bit less uh, PIS3 uh, kinase, and extrahepatic disease, Keras, and R2. So it means that we have to uh, specifically address these uh, um, abnormalities with, with uh, new, new drugs. That has been clearly shown by a lot of data now in the, in the literature, and we, we have seen one of these uh, series uh, this, this afternoon, but we, we already published that uh, a few years ago. Uh, the idea was to look on the role of personalized medicine in all types of, of cancer, but specifically, and the idea of this uh, trial, Moscato 1, was to take patients that were considered to be resistant, and they were treated with uh, in the next step, they were treated with personalized medicine, and the M, according to the NGS uh, that was done on the tumor, and the M of the trial was to show that with this personalized medicine, we were able to observe a progression-free, a median progression-free survival that was 1.3, the progression-free survival that has been observed in the previous line. So the idea you know, median progression-free survival is decreasing with time when you are doing a new line. There, with personalized medicine, the aim of this trial was to show that we could increase the median progression-free survival because we were selectively uh, targeting uh, something. Uh, and we focused our um, experience in this. It has been completely published, this Moscato 1 trial. But if we focus on BDI tract cancer, you can see 42 patients were included in this trial, uh, and it was possible in uh, these patients, in 71% of these patients, to find druggable molecular aberration. It means that we were able, probably it's a little bit high, but at least it's interesting to know that we are able in, I would say, 50% of the patients, and probably personalized medicine is something that is working very well in cholangiocarcinoma, more than 
any other type of GI cancer. In 50% of the patients, we are able to find a target and we have the drug to uh, fight against uh, this, this target. We were able in this trial to treat uh, 18 patients, so it means that we are losing a lot of patients because they are, as it has been already said, they are with advanced disease, so it's not always possible to, to give them the, the drug that has, that has been selected. Uh, but when it was done, I don't go into the details of that, you can see the, the different type of, of abnormalities. This is very various, but FGFR fusion mainly for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, as I already said, we, we, we have found exactly uh, the, the patterns that, that I already mentioned. And if you look specifically on the efficacy when we were targeting these abnormalities, you can see that we were able to obtain some objective uh, response with, for instance, in these patients that was R2 positive, a very nice uh, response with combination of trastuzumab and lapatinib. And we, we met exactly the, the primary, even better than other type of cancer. You can see the PFS ratio. I mentioned you that it should be 1.3 to consider as interesting. Specifically for BDI tract cancer, the PFS ratio was more than two. So we consider that as clearly something very interesting. But this is the first step. And if we look on the literature now, we can see if there is some kind of proof of concept. Yes, there is, because you can see that when you give to uh, refractory patients a drug such as trimetinib without any, uh, any way to select patients, you fail to demonstrate any activity. If you select patients, for instance, for, with FGFR, uh, anti-FGFR, if you select patients with fusion of, or, or amplification of FGFR, you can see that this is completely different. You can observe a lot of objective response, so you have selected the population. And this is exactly the same ID when you find uh, an IDH1 to 3 uh, mutation. You can give to these patients IDH inhibitors because we know that the mutant forms of IDH1 or 2 is able to catalyze the non-reversible accumulation of uh, hydroxyglutarate. And this is something that is a way of carcinogenesis, amplifying the, the, the carcinogenesis and the aggressiveness of the disease. And we have some drugs at this moment that are able to fight against that. Uh, one of these drugs has been used in uh, the, the, this one. Ivozidenib has been used in, uh, in phase one. Uh, this has been already published with some interesting results. And we had very uh, recently a press release concerning this randomized trial. So results of randomized trial are coming. Uh, this randomized tri trial was comparing uh, placebo versus ivozidenib in these patients with this abnormality, and the press release has shown that the trial is uh, positive because it demonstrated uh, this drug demonstrated a statistically significant improvement in progression-free survival compared to placebo. This is a press release that has been uh, uh, given in May uh, 2019. We are waiting for complete presentation of the data of this of this trial. Another pathway, and we have seen uh, uh, R2 inhibition. I, uh, I don't want to go into the details of that. We have preliminary data concerning, we had preliminary data concerning R2 inhibition, and we have seen already a few minutes ago the results of the submit trial, the basket submit trial with neratinib in this BDI tract cancer. This is working too when there is an R2 uh, positivity. The last mutation that I would like to discuss with you is BURAF uh, V60, uh, uh, V600E uh, mutations. We know that this is a mutation that is very important in melanoma. It is very important in BURAF mutant colon cancer too. And what about this mutation in BDI tract cancer? You have seen that this is possible to find this kind of mutation in 5 to 6% of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. 
so there are some, some trials evaluating the role of uh, BRAF inhibitors uh, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this disease. And we have seen during the last uh, ASCO meeting the results of the uh, uh, combination of dabrafinib and trametinib in these patients with uh, BRAF mutated biliary tract cancer. And again, as you can see, when you select the patients, you are able to really increase the activity of drugs in refractory uh, patients. So with, uh, what is interesting too is the fact that you can observe in refractory biliary tract cancer, you can see more than nine months of progression free, median progression free survival is something that is very, very long and this is very, very encouraging. Uh, I do not want to go into the details of that. This is the TCGA. TCGA is something that is interesting to know better the, the, the diseases, but in fact, we, cannot use, we don't use that, but you can see that you can find the abnormalities in these different classes of TCGA, and I think it's better to focus on specific abnormalities. At the end, what we are going to do now is either to look on some specificity, R2 uh, mutation, for instance, and so on, or another possibility is to take all the cholangiocarcinoma carcinoma together to do a first line of treatment, and then during this first line of treatment, to try to find a specific target that we can use in second line, and this is a trial that is ongoing in Europe, and there is exactly the same trial ongoing in US, and we will have, I think, in two or three years, the, the results of that. Uh, I will not go into the results in uh, immune therapy. This is working a little bit, but at this time, this is not specifically focused. This is not uh, biologically driven. So I will go to the conclusion. I think that I already said that. Clearly, to my opinion, cholangiocarcinoma is the best target for personalized medicine in GI oncology. And we have, at this moment, some examples showing that this is clearly working. Thank you.